Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow saints who are salt and light in this world, exactly where your God wants you to be. Now, I'm not exactly an expert chef, but there, there is one thing that, that you never want people to, to, to describe about. If you, you do everything right, you have the, the, the proper portions, the, the proper techniques, the, the proper balance of different ingredients, the timing is right, everything can be right. But if you fail to, to season it properly, then sometimes you end up with something that's undesirable. And even though you got all the other things right, people call it that, that word that you never want people to describe your cooking as. Bland. Bland. That meal was bland. That food is bland. You don't want people to describe your cooking that way. But if we fail to, to, to season our food properly, it can get bland. And so then you're leaving something on the table, aren't you? You fail to season it properly. And it's amazing how just a, a little bit of salt can, can do a lot of difference. In our lesson from God's Word today, He calls us salt. He calls us a city on a hill. He calls us a lake. Salt and light. And we're going to see what that, that really means to be salt and light on the earth for our God. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. Our God calls us salt and light. And the interesting thing about both of those terms, really, he uses almost three metaphors, three ways of describing whether it's salt or whether it's the, the light of an entire city on a hill or the light of just a single lamp in a room. It's really the, the same point. Because both of those two are often described and, and, and are often most notably felt in their absence. If the dish doesn't have enough salt and it's bland and, and you don't even want to eat it, if there isn't any light, then you can't even see where you're going. Either way, they're often described by the absence of them. Think about that for us. God calling us salt and light on the earth. Don't be absent. If the salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? And if you cover up a lamp with a bowl, what good is it? And you can't even think about trying to hide a city on a hill. There's no way that you're going to cover every single light in that city, in that town on a hill. And just think about how far off you can see that in the night. Our God calls us salt and light. And the interesting thing about salt and light, they're, they're, they're missed in their absence, but they're also very powerful in their presence, even a small amount. You don't need that much salt to, to make the dish. You don't need that much light in order to be able to at least see something. And in the presence of a great amount of darkness, even a small amount of light can be seen. Do not 
think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them or to fulfill them. You see, we, we live in a world that sort of wants us to, to lose that solidness, that wants us to cover up that light. That doesn't want our presence to be known or to be felt. We live in, in a, a dark world. We live in a, a world that, that is in the, the absence, that under-seasoned world that desperately needs the salt of saints. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. God is serious about when we look around this world and, and see the, the consequences of sin and, 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 and see all of the, the, the people that continue to, to fall into that sinful path, people that don't know Jesus, and then the, the real kicker is when we see people that are supposed to be Christians and we see them sin. <coughs>
tells us that people are basically sinful, basically evil. And he tells us to be salt and to be loved. That that method of just trying to figure out the right, the, the right system so that we can legislate morality, we can't do it. But we can be salt and light. We can make a difference. And maybe God makes a difference in, in a way that goes above and beyond anything we could ever hope for. And, and so many people, dozens and hundreds and thousands, and, and our church is growing and, and souls are being won for the gospel. And, and, and our, our world is starting to look like a better place as more and more people become Christian, become believers, and become salt and light. And one light spreads on to the next. It's not just about making this world a better place. It's, it's true that salt and light, that is what we are. And we can make a difference in this world just by who we are. Just by God using us exactly where he wants us. But that's not really the ultimate goal, is it? Our God wants us to be salt and light so that souls can be one for the gospel so that they can be within it. So even if it doesn't look like the amazing picture of success, the way that our, our culture, our society wants to, 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 to find success, maybe there's only one person that seems like they come to faith in Jesus through all of your hard work and effort being solved in life. Maybe it's not. Maybe as far as you can tell from all of your labor, you can't look and point to a single person that you think knows Jesus because of your witness, because of you being solved in life. See the whole picture. Do we? Maybe God used us to, to, to start the process. And at some point, years down the road, with you never knowing about it, then God was able to use a different group or a different person to be salt and light to bring them to faith. That's still a win for our God. Because his goal is to make sure that we get to dwell with him forever in heaven. Not just that this world is better. Because God sees this world correctly as a sinful one. But he has something better for us. A new heaven and a new earth. God wants us to do good deeds so that people can see them and praise your Father in heaven. To let our light shine so that people can know who their Savior is, so that people can get into that proper relationship so that they can be with them in heaven someday too. And maybe sometime, maybe someday you make it to heaven and there's, there's one person, one person in heaven because God was able to use you as a witness. You were solved, you were loved, and God worked his will according to his perfect plan. Even if it didn't look the way that we would like to. See, we want to see the big numbers, the big success with our God. It's about every soul that he calls to a right relationship with him. <coughs> Life. God will leverage us exactly where he wants us so that he can spread that good news. So that he can reach souls with his love. That he can bring souls to be with him. 